Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the XR Club and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to look at creating this actual versus budget visualization. Now this visualization charts three different series of data. It charts the actual, it charts the budget and it charts the variance. The actual and the budgets can be seen in the columns down here. And this is a standard column chart. Above this then, we can see our variance. And this is created using a scatter chart along with some data bars. And it's the data bars that allow us to create these up down arrows to show the different variances. Before we get stuck into this video, if you are watching on YouTube, I do hope you will give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification button so you don't miss any more of my videos. So if you're ready to get stuck in, let's take a look at the data and let's try and recreate this chart. So the data that we have been given shows us our products, it shows us our actual sales and it shows us our budget sales. And we're going to create a standard column chart to begin with. So I'm going to insert a column chart and I'm going to just make it a little bit bigger so we can all see what it is that I'm doing. Now we can go ahead and we can start doing some formatting straight away on this chart. So I'm going to take our axis and I'm going to just make it bold and black. I'm also going to take our bottom axis and do the same, make it bold and black. And I am going to take our legend and I'm going to make the text in that bold and black, just so all the text is consistent without the chart. I'm then going to give this chart a title and it's going to be called actual versus budget. And again, I can change the formatting in this and I'm going to make it bold and black as well. So that's the outline of the chart and the formatting done. And now we need to do some formatting to our bars. So we have our actual sales in blue and we have our budget sales in orange. And we want to format these. We want to overlap them and apply a little bit of formatting to them. So let's select our bike series. And on our bike series, we're going to move this to our secondary axis. Now, by moving it to our secondary axis, it's going to put it in front of our budget figures of our primary axis. But what you're going to note here is that we have a new axis that's now being added. I'm going to select it and then I am going to delete the axis. And that puts both of the bars then onto the same scale. Now I'm going to select our budget axis, our back axis. And what I'm going to do is make our gap width smaller. So I'm going to bring that down to 100%. And you see now how that has widened above the size of the actual column. So it makes it a lot clearer for us to see. Now we can also do a little bit of formatting on our color. We can do a gradient fill. And I am going to have a two color gradient fill from this lighter orange here. So if you click on the marker and you can select the color there and click on the marker here to select the lighter color, which we've selected there. I'm also then going to change the color of our actuals. And I'm going to change this scroll up to a solid fill. And this time I'm going to make it a gray color. But again, I'm going to make it a gradient fill. And I should have just left the color change for the moment because when you make it gradient, you need to change the color in the actual gradient. And I'm going to select this gray moving up to on our second point, this gray here. So that gives the chart that a little bit more depth. Now, the final bit of formatting I'm going to do on this chart is I'm going to remove the grid lines. So now we have the base for our chart, which showing us our actual versus our budgets. So basically we've taken a column chart and we've put both the columns on different axes. We've removed then the second axis, which makes the series the same size, but the columns are now overlapped for us. So the next thing we want to do is create the little up down bar, 
arrows, bars and arrows that you've seen in the example chart. So to do that, we need to calculate our variance and then we need to create a column for our up arrows and for our down arrows. So we need to do a little bit of work to our data for this. So I'm going to create a variance column and then I'm going to create an up column and a down column. So our variance column is going to be our actual minus our budget divided by our budget. And this gives us our percentage variance, change it to a percentage. And this gives us a percentage based on our actual versus our budget. So we can see our budget for bikes was 32, almost 33,000, but we only got 29,500. So the variance is 11%. Now, when you're trying to chart different variances, it's best to have them as separate columns in your data set, because that way you can have them as different lines or different columns or different plots or different series in your charts. So we need to create an up column and a down column. So for this, we can use a basic if statement, and we can basically say, if our variance is greater than zero, then we want our variance, otherwise we want NA. Now, why would we want NA rather than blank? If you put in a blank and then we try and chart this, the blanks will come in as values of zero, whereas NAs are not charted at all. So I'm gonna fill this down, and then I'm actually gonna take a copy of that formula and stick it in here and change the greater than to less than, and I'm gonna fill this down. And I'm also going to change the formatting of these two percentages. So although that looks very untidy with the errors in there, the NAs in there, it will allow us to create a chart where those particular items are not plotted. Now I'll change them back to zeros later on so you can see what happens when they are zeros but it's best to apply them as NAs. Now you can also, if you have them as zeros, you can apply custom formatting to the cells. So the zeros don't show up, but that's a little bit more complex than doing it the way I've just done it here. So now we can select our data series now that we want to chart. And I'm going to insert this time a scatter chart. Now I'm gonna drag this scatter chart over here and make it a little bit bigger. So you can see exactly what I'm doing to work on it. So let's take our first series, our up series. So we see that we don't have point 0.1 and point 0.2 has nothing on it. Where is where if we had the zeros in here or the blanks in here, this would be charted. So let me just show you that now. So if I change from that to is blank, we see a new point has come up here and that value is actually being charted. Whereas if we have the NA, it's not included in the chart at all. Now that is a really nifty trick. So let us select our first series of data points here. And what we're going to do is we are going to insert some error bars to this. Now, when our error bars come in, we have a crosshair shape. And we don't need both the horizontal and the vertical. We just need the vertical so we can select the horizontal. And from there, we can select delete. And that just leaves us with these straight bars. Now I'm going to select the straight bar and we have our format errors bar here. We're gonna do a little bit of formatting to turn these into those arrows that you've seen. So first of all, we don't need direction in both. We need to select the direction in minus. Then we're going to scroll down here to this error amount. Now these are error bars, which usually show us the error in a sample data set. And if we change the percentage to 100, what it'll do is create the error bar from zero to 100. So I'll select 100 and you see that bar now has now appeared here. From here, I am going to go to my fill. I'm gonna change my fill to this dark green, and then I'm going to increase the size of this to two and a half points. 
Then finally, at the beginning of the arrow, I'm gonna put this um, this arrow top. So we can clearly see that there is an arrow on it and it is pointing upwards. Now you'll see there's still these data markers here. So I'm gonna go back in here to this. And in the data series, I am going to go to marker and I'm going to go to marker options and we're going to say none. And that gets rid of those markers that we had there. So that is our up series. And we'll see, we see that we have our four points plotted here so far. What we're going to do now is we are going to do our down series. So we will add our error bars again. And we're going to remove the horizontal one, leaving us with the vertical error bars. Then we're going to select the vertical error bars and we're going to do the same sort of formatting. So I selected minus. Our percentage is going to be 100%. And now we have these down lines going all the way down as far as they need to go. Then I'm going to go into our colors. I'm going to change the color of our down bar arrow to red. And I'm going to increase the width to two and a half. And I'm also then going to add our arrow top to the bottom or to the top of this as well. Now we can see that we have our arrows in, but again, we need to select the entire series because we need to remove those marker dots. So we go to our marker and we will go to our marker options and we will say none. And that removes those markers for, from us, from the chart as well. Now we can see down the bottom of our arrows, we have these little arrows as well on the bottom of our line. So we need to remove these. So I'm going to format our error bars and I'm going to go to end style, which is no cap. And we need to do both this to both the up and the down arrows. We don't need a chart title for this and we also don't need our grid line. So I'm going to remove our chart title and I'm going to remove our grid lines from this. Now we have our line, but we have these numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so forth. We want to remove them, but we want to leave the line that's there intact. Now, if we select the axis and say delete, it also removes the line. So what we can do instead is selecting our axis. If we go down to our label option and in our label option, if we say none, that removes the labels, but it keeps the line intact. Now we need to add the value. So we need to add the data series to our scatter plot chart with our with our error bars so we can add in our data labels and then we can position our data labels below or above we'll select them separately and we will select them above and these ones down here are below and we can make these bold and black and make these bold and black as well. Now we can remove our axis and we can make this chart smaller. And now we can start positioning our chart over our original chart. So here's our original chart. And I'm just gonna again, make this a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna take this chart and drag it across. And then we're gonna try and line up our values. Now, when you're lining up your values, you have the, the entire chart series to play with, as you can see here. So you can drag the entire chart series, but you can also then change the chart area within the chart too. So let me just bring it down here so we can see. I am going to make no fill on this chart. So it is transparent. And now we can work on lining things up a little bit more. That looks nicely lined up. So I'm going to drag our chart up. 
I'm going to remove the legend from in here. And I am also going to put no border around that chart too. So now you can't actually see the, the chart borders either. But what we do have is a problem with this line in the center of the chart. So I think we will just remove the line because it's not really needed. Now the final step would be to select both of the charts and then group these two charts together. By grouping the two charts together, you can then just move, move it all in tandem, move it all together like it is one chart. So that's how you can create a actual versus budget chart. That's showing your actuals, it's showing your budgets, and it's also then showing the variances that you have. And we used a combination of charts for this. We used a column chart, an overlapping column chart, and then we placed over this chart, we placed a scatter chart, and we used the error bars to create these up, down arrows. I do hope that you enjoyed this video. So don't forget, if you have not already given it the big thumbs up, I hope that you will share it with your friends and your colleagues. And I hope that you will subscribe to my channel to watch more of my videos. My name is Paula from the Exile Club. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.